Bucket Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and Ankara has made good on its promise there, has started shelling the Kurds in Afrin. Afrin, of course, there on the northern side of the border inside of Syria, and that attack has begun in earnest. Uh, I'll kind of give you an idea of where Afrin is located here on the map here. We're looking here, Aleppo right here, up here, Afrin is that little small uh, province there in the northern part there. The Syrian government, uh, without any protest, gave up or I should say without a fight, gave up Afrin over to the Kurdish people uh, some time back there. And they have been in communication. We've actually uh, spoke uh, this morning with a good friend of ours there in Syria and talked about uh, what is going on between the Kurds and Syria, especially with this unexpected turn of uh, Damascus saying that they would back the Kurds if in, if in the event uh, Turkey crossed their border to attack the Kurdish people in Afrin. As I was shared about this is that the Syrian government is trying to deal with its own internal issues and of course that being with the Kurds as well and they are trying to work out an agreement. Uh, they of course the Kurds had said that they would raise a Syrian flag inside of uh, Afrin where they're located at there as a solidarity with Syria but still they cannot come to a complete agreement about issues there. Nonetheless Damascus has made it very clear that they will stand with uh, the the Kurdish group inside of Afrin if Turkey does try to cross the border. They would shoot down any planes that come in. So instead, Turkey at the moment has started shelling Afrin from across the border. As you can see, this particular military convoy of tanks that have come up to the Syrian border already and are expected to come in. Russia, no doubt, has recognized the fact that uh, the, 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 the Turkish uh, group are very serious about crossing into Afrin and Turkey, uh, excuse me, Russia has actually begun a withdrawal according to some reports from Afrin and backed up to where the Syrian military is in a little province there just south of Afrin there. That would actually be, we kind of move into the area here so we can see exactly what we're talking about. It's Nabul right there, this little province here in this area here, this is supposedly, or either in this direction here, is where the Russian troops have begun to withdraw this morning, trying to get out of the, uh, the fire of the Turkish military. Now, the question is, will Russia side with Syria, who's been their partner, or they, will they stay out of the fight? Russia has also been very complimentary towards the Kurds, as well as uh, the United States has. And President Trump has, of course, uh, b vowed to build that security force with the, with the Kurds over here on the eastern side of the Euphrates River. And no doubt President Trump will support the Kurds in this region here, but will he actually do anything to help the Kurds that are over in Afrin, over in the northwest part of the country there? That still remains to be seen. And at this point in time, seeing that Damascus is trying to work with the Kurds, how far will Damascus go in trying to protect the Kurds from a Turkish attack? After all, the Turkish military is a very formidable military to be dealing with. I spoke with one friend of mine, he's a uh, former Navy SEAL, and he had actually trained with the Turkish military. And he said that Turkey is a very powerful military in the region there. And with Syria under such a massive uh, war here for the last five, or excuse me, six, six, all going on seven years now, dealing with ISIS, their forces have been weakened considerably. So whether or not they really want to take on Turkey in a battle at this point here is will remain to be seen. And with Russia being willing to help Syria with ISIS militants and other uh, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra uh, uh, militants that are inside of his country. I don't know if Russia, though, would be willing to take on Syria. We have reached out to one of our friends there uh, also in Russia to try to get a response about Russia's particular take on this. I've not got a response back at this time as of yet there, but very troubling. Also, another issue that puts uh, kind of President Trump on really an awkward position is Germany's stance with Turkey. Turkey has legitimate security interests in Syria. Berlin acknowledges Ankara's concerns, yet urges restraint amid reports of imminent military operation in Afrin. So that 
puts it in a very awkward position with President Trump and his stance with the Kurds, uh, excuse me, with the, uh, with the Kurds there inside of Syria. How will that play out? Well, that's still yet to be seen. Uh, moving on over in other news here, uh, RT is reporting here today, working with our diplomats or deal with U.S. military, Mattis warns unveiling new defense strategy. Now, again, this supports very strongly our stand on Daniel's prophecy of 1144. Look at what the uh, what uh, General Mattis is saying here. He says here the U.S. will counter any threat to America's democracy experiment in the world if necessary with military force. Now he doesn't actually call it democracy experiment. Uh, I think that's a quote from uh, I don't know, maybe so, we'll see. The Pentagon chief threatened, Jim Mattis said, Russia and China are potential adversaries for the U.S. Tell me that tidings out of the East now the North are not troubling that Nephilim leader. Now, that's not James Mattis is not the Nephilim by no means, and neither is it Donald Trump. But there is a deep state man in the background, and we know this from the former defense minister of Canada, who clearly came out and said there is an alien presence working with the U.S. military. And that, of course, is under a NATO command. So very troubling there. Again, it's another uh, clear indication that the tidings out of the east, now the north, that greatly trouble him are China and Russia. And it supports what we believe the prophecy of Daniel 1144. Don't forget, though, they will go forth to take away many. And that will be a NATO force. It won't just be the U.S. As we reported yesterday, the U.S. is waiting for the NATO to come on board to deal with North Korea. And they know that that's going to deal with Russia and China as well. Of course, Russia not playing around either. Uh, and this is only even more proof that there's troubling issues when it comes to uh, uh, Russia and China. Uh, this here from Air, Aircraft Spots here, January 19, JSDF fighters scramble to intercept one Russian Air Force Su-24 over the Sea of Japan. They just don't trust Russia whatsoever, nor China for that matter. Uh, Russia also taking some precautions of their own, especially with the increased uh, war possibility happening in Ukraine right now, where the Ukrainian government talking about taking back eastern part of, its prov of the province there, Donetsk and Luhansk, and even the threat under Petro Poroshenko of taking Crimea back. Well, Russia sent in the S-400, and they are doing maneuvers in Crimea right now. They are preparing for a war with Ukraine, which if it's a war with Ukraine, it's going to drag the U.S. into it. There's just no way around it, friends. Very troubling situation indeed there. Also, as I've said before, why is it Christian nations fight against Christian nations? You know, I mean, the United States, President Trump, very much a uh, supporter of the Christian coalition in the U.S. They, they are the ones that helped get him elected. President Putin also showing in his own deeds there that he stands for uh, well, his doctrinal side of uh, believing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah as he goes to do the annual ritual bath, kind of like an annual baptism they do in the Russian Orthodox uh, religion there, uh, as he goes down into this icy waters. And by the way, it was like the minus 30 degrees at the time there, very cold. Uh, so he goes in it and uh, does the sign of the cross. This is supposed to wash away their sins. The Russians do this annually and they go under the water. He comes back out of that. Uh, one other thing I want to kind of conclude with, we were talking about Sweden the other day and I really you know, I'll tell you what, friends, if, if, there, if we've got any of our Swedish listeners that uh, would like to come on Israeli News Live, and I know it's a major risk for you guys, but if you're willing to come on Israeli News Live, talk about this situation inside of Sweden, we would love to have you on. This here, rape reports up by 400% in Sweden's capital since 1996. I mean, this is unimaginable that this type of ungodliness could happen to these people there. According to Sweden's Crime Prevention Council, 7,200 rapes reported due to the, uh, uh, to the police in 2017. The number corresponds with approximately 20 rapes a day. I mean, no wonder why the Prime Minister says talking about putting the military on the streets. You know what? Take and convict these people, make mandatory sentences, 
whether it be life imprisonment or whatever, you know, I, I tell you quite frankly, if you're gonna if you're gonna rape, I think they should do public castration. I know that's pretty pretty doggone tough to say that, but you know what? You'd stop all this nonsense. That would certainly make a major change in, in, in this rape epidemic that's going on there. My heart goes out for the Swedish people. And again, if you're willing to come on, you live in Sweden, you know what's going on, you want to talk about this epidemic in your country, we want to get you on Israeli News Live. Write to us, IsraeliNewsLive at gmail.com. Put in the, the uh, description, Sweden. And we would love to talk to you there because uh, we really want to bring attention to this epidemic that's happening. It's not just in Sweden either, friends. This is happening across Western Europe uh, with the uh, refugee crisis there. Uh, you know, and I hate to say refugees because I realize there are some refugees that really do need help. They did come from a war-torn country and they do need help and many of them walking on foot. Uh, but we also know, we have a good friend of ours there in the Netherlands and he has shared with me before um, about interviewing uh, some of the refugees and was really amazed to find out that they actually said they were being offered money and that there were women here. And that's why they were willing to even leave their families. These were men, just men refugees. Why is there such a large uh, number of men that came into the country? And that's what they were being told. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Stand with our broadcast here, would you? And uh, support the work we're doing. We do appreciate your help. You're the ones that help keep us on the air. And uh, we're really trying to reach out more. I've gotten quite a few responses about doing transcribing of our prophetic insights here on Israeli News Live. I appreciate that. I am going to be start emailing some of you uh, out there to see what we can do to put this together. We had this once before uh, so that we can reach more of the people in China. Uh, that is such a blessing. And if you also have the ability to translate, and we're not looking at every single message either, friends. We're mainly looking our, at the messages that have a prophetic insight insight. Um, and let's say you speak Spanish or any other language that's out there, Spanish, Russian, uh, one of these languages here, and you would like to be a part of what we're trying to do here, reaching the people. We could create uh, extra pages on the Israeli News Wet Live website there, uh, in different languages, and we would actually begin to post some of our broadcasts there. You know, even if it's just one every couple of weeks. That would be incredible. Again, if you put that, put translator in the subject line and send that to Israeli News Live at Gmail. And uh, we just bear with us. We get hundreds of emails. So I've got to search for them and we'll get back with you on that as well. Shalom and God bless you.